Well, you've no doubt noticed by now that I'm proud of my woodland scenic work. So I'm going to do it again. Wait, don't leave! It's going to be different from last week, I promise. Hi guys, so the area in question this week is between the bridge and the station, aka more woodland area. The first thing to do is to fill the gap between the foam and the fascia board, just the usual thick filler mix with a drop of brown paint will do. I've decided to bring the woodland over the lane a bit. I didn't know how wide to make the lane when I laid it, and it turns out it was very wide. Better safe than sorry I guess. The rest of the area has a thin filler coat applied. And now we must wait for it to dry. I decided to continue the slate fence along this section of track, so here we go again. But wait! I have learnt, nay, evolved since the last attempt, so pay attention. The slates were cut from a sheet of plaster card. I did make these a little bit longer this time and the reason will soon become apparent. Oh, here's the reason. Instead of sticking them down one by one to paint, I'll simply jab them into a piece of polystyrene. This way I can spray all the sides of the slate in one go. God I'm clever sometimes. These slates are given an undercoat of black primer, because I've run out of grey primer. Doesn't make much of a difference. Then a main coat of deco art slate grey is applied, to match the slates in the field. Ah, now, whilst I could spray them all at once, I could only dry brush them separately. Though this doesn't really take much time, and as you'll see, I get quite big for my boots at this point, starting with a single slate, and then two slates at a time. And then three slates at a time! Efficiency. Slates are done for now, so let's get to the trees. The conifers follow much the same procedure as last time, firstly splitting kebab skewers in half and sharpening the ends to a point. Holes are then drilled through the lower section of the stick, and I've learned to not have my fingers directly below where I'm drilling. Note the plaster. Strips of florist wire are now cut to short, random lengths, and these will be the branches. Nice and simple, the wire is threaded through the pre-drilled holes, and a drop of superglue added to the centre. before pushing the wire all the way through the hole. There is still a chance of stabbing yourself here, so keep fingers clear of the holes. When the glue's dry, the wire is bent to a more natural stance. Looking at photos, they do appear to curve upwards or towards the end, so that's what I'm replicating. Green Scene's flexi bark is painted over the whole trunk, and this will give the texture of the bark to the skewer. Kind of. I mean, it's not ideal, but it's quick and easy. We like quick and easy. The tree's bark now needs to cure before moving on, so we'll hop over to the road. Something that I forgot to make until now is the level crossing boards, and this needs to be set in a track before I can ballast up to them. So to make this, I measure the gap where the boards will sit, and cut it from a sheet of plaster card. To make it look like two boards, the middle is lightly scored with a knife, and then with my stabby tool, which opens it up a bit more. To make it look even more like two separate boards, the ends are cut to give an uneven look. The whole crossing has a file dragged over it, which scores the wood texture into the smooth finish of the plaster card. Now I've test fitted the crossing and as the railway curves slightly into the station, the boards need to be modified to suit it. This is quite a prototypical procedure, and I'm not just winging it. Finally the boards get liquid poly applied to the underside and a second strip of plaster card is glued on. This raises the crossing up to rail height, without it the crossing sits too low and looks a bit daft. The crossing is now sprayed with black primer. Again, still no grey. The main coat is good old miniature paints number 82 Earth Brown. 
This is a great colour for older wood and it takes weathering really well. It'll need two coats to get a good full coverage. To age the wood, the crossing is dry brushed with light antique white. Whilst all of the wood needs covering, I do try to get the edges of the planks a bit more. With that dry, it can now be stuck down. Super glue is added to the sleepers that will sit directly under the crossing. The crossing is dropped into place and held for a few seconds while the glue sets. It's wise to check the clearances when doing something like this, so a train is run over the crossing a few times. No problems. Back onto the conifers and they're ready for painting as well. Army Painter's Ash Grey is used here to match the previously made conifers. Back off the conifers and I realise that I need to complete the track side before it's covered by trees, so the ballast and dirt mix is applied along the line. And brush smooth with a fluffy brush. This doesn't have to be perfect as it's a railway heading for death, so messy is quite acceptable. A change from last time here and now I have IPA back in stock or isopropyl alcohol. So we're going down a traditional method of setting ballast. And apparently that starts with an absolutely pathetic spray bottle. With IPA now flooded over the ballast mix, the ballast bond can be dropped on. You can see how the IPA is acting to help break the surface tension and the glue is happily soaking through. Without the IPA first, the glue would actually sit as glue blobs on top of the ballast and not soak through. And it does help to be a bit generous with the glue. Too much won't really affect the final result, but not enough and the ballast could lift away in areas. The ballast needs a day to dry, but before it's fully set, I use my stabber tool to run along the inside of the rails. This flicks off any stones that may have stuck to them as these will not only look silly, but can derail the train. The fence can now be laid. And as per the field section, I use the knife to cut a slit alongside the railway. The slates can now be fixed into their final position. A drop of PVA on their base is enough. Due to slow curing time, PVA does have the advantage of giving the time to adjust their position, and I found this really helpful, as I wanted to get the slates at the same sort of height as the field slates. One thing I did miss on the field slate fence was the wire that would be used to hold them together. It's not an issue for the field area as I can access that at any point, however, this fence will be virtually impossible to get to soon, so I'll add the wire now. This is thin cotton thread. And to start it off, a drop of superglue is added to the end slate. Starting with one thread, it's weaved in and out of the slates along the fence. Every tenth or so slate, I apply a drop of superglue to keep the thread taut and in place. Whilst threading the, well, thread, it helps to use tweezers to hold the thread down as it can easily pop off over the top of the slate and undo your work. And stop. Stop for a minute, look how good I've got at it. I then started again with the second thread. This time going the opposite way round the slates from the first. The wire used on these fences commonly rusts. So to represent this, I'm applying rust weathering pigment below the wire. The fence is finished now so I can move on to the woodland floor, making sure that the glue covers right up to the edges of the landscape. The first coat of scenery is the dirt base. This was collected from our drive during the hot weather and sieved, and this can be sprinkled over the glue. Due to the steep nature of this part of the landscape, I'm holding a tub just below the layout to collect the dirt that's running off. This meant that not only do my socks stay clean, but I can apply the dirt quite heavy to make sure it's got full coverage. 
Dirt is also applied to this weird little corner by the bridge. It blends well with the ballast due to the mix containing the same dirt. Ah right, scenic cement. So I've been using Deluxe Material Scenic Spray Glue up to this point, but that's ran out. I went with Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement this time as a replacement. My god, why is it spraying like that? What am I doing wrong? The glue is a good consistency, but it's coming out so heavy. Anyway, the next coat is Leaf Scatter. Again, this is collected from outside. Dead leaves are blended into a fine, well, scatter. It looks great in areas like this because of the natural colours. It smells quite nice, actually. The track bed has a coating of static grass applied from my broken static grass applicator. Because the glue's still wet, I run the vacuum, not Hoover as that's a brand, along the track bed to remove any too close to the rails. The intense spray glue is now shot at the areas where I'm planning to grow some hedges. Polyfiber is then pushed down onto the glue. This will form the base of the hedges. Unlike in the previous video, I'm applying the undergrowth and hedges before the trees. Because I evolved, I keep telling you. The inside of the railway's boundaries are again hosed with a Superforce glue gun. Honestly, I'm being so light on the trigger. A green fine flock is now sprinkled over the glued sections. This is meant to represent the overgrown mossy weedy plants that you find in shady whales. The fireman standard glue spray is now applied to the hedges. These are getting a coat of the knock dark leaf material which is the same stuff I used around the river area, so it's connecting up nicely. This is then followed up with Knox light green leaf material. Time to finish off those trees. Polyfiber is ripped into clumps and teased out into a disc shape. These are then fitted down onto the tree trunks. The finished trees get waterboarded with glue from my new sprayer. The static grass applicators are applied poorly through my deceased applicator. The tree is airbrushed with deep bronze green to darken the finish, as the static grass fibres are pretty light. The trees are dried off and ready to plant. The stabby tool is used to punch a hole into the woodland floor, and with the base of the trees dipped in PVA, it's pushed into the hole. The rest of the trees follow suit, and unlike the previous video, I didn't make enough this time, and I'm uncomfortable with the amount of woodland floor showing through, and instead of making more conifers, I'll go back and make a bunch of sea foam trees. This is the bunch of sea foam trees. These are first sprayed with oak brown to tone down the naturally light finish of the sea foam. Polyfiber is now added to the trees. Doing this in smaller, separate parts gives more natural finish to the tree. Christ, more spray glue. The knock dark leaf material is now added. Before the light green. This gives a bit more variation to the foliage. These are planted on the layout to fill any larger gaps in the conifers. I also decided to add a couple further out of the woods, like over here. And over here. So there we go. Well, people say you should have a railway in a landscape. Can't say that I haven't got it here. The trees close to the railway block views. 
and give more interest to the train's journey as you follow it down the line. This is really starting to get serious chorus vibes now and that's really exciting to see happen. Instead of just watching trains go by, it now snakes in and out of the trees. Very chorus. Very chorus. Yeah, sorry, I've gone a bit overboard with the final shots this week, but I like it. And if you do too, which, if you're still watching at this point, I'm going to assume that you do. Either that or you have nowhere else to go. But you have sanctuary here, child. Have you seen these videos? They might be good. What am I saying? They're brilliant! Cheers.